Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, I wanna show how to create a automated photogrammetry converter in Houdini. So basically, if you created a photogrammetry scan, uh, I did this one in Reality Capture, but you can do it in different kind of programs. And I'll leave a link in the description to a School of Motion tutorial that goes into this technique. They show you how to do a shoe, and I wanted to be more original and do another object, but this was the best I had, so <laughs> let's just stick with it. So let's jump in the geometry tool. Here you can see what we're doing. So we're basically importing an object in the FBX archive import. So you just point to the file on your hard drive. And then as always, the model is way too big. So we can use a transform node to scale it down. Usually with a scale of 0 0.1, you're in a good range. Then I rotate it a bit. So it's kind of like aligned a bit better on the axis. So you don't have to do this in case you have a big scene that you captured and you're processing pieces of that scene. You probably want to disable the node, so you can just hit Q and you disable it. And then lastly, I appended a match size, so it's sitting on the floor in the center. And then I append a smooth node. And basically the smooth node, as it says, smooths out a lot of high frequency detail. So if you're creating a scan, especially with your iPhone or, you know, with a compressed image, you usually get some high frequency noise. So we want to smooth that out before we're going into this whole process because otherwise we'll get a lot of noise like you can see here and especially in the back you can see here we get all these weird details that we don't want in case you have a really clean scan without too much noise feel free to disable this and play with the strength sometimes i had to use the clean note in order to get different results in this case i don't but just to keep in mind and the same goes for the attribute delete. So sometimes you want to delete the point color data so that point color doesn't get converted and you want to convert the actual textures, not the point color. But again, it's up to you, whatever works for your situation. And then just as good practice, it's a good idea to add normals because yeah, not all models have good normals. Then we open a null with our in geometry. So this is basically that goes into the conversion. A cleaned up high resolution version and then the first step we want to do is poly reduce so if you look before we have a lot of triangles and we want to reduce that down to a certain level of quality i find is best so you can either set it to a percentage to keep but what i think is better is to set the tolerance to a level that you find good and in my instance the one e minus zero six was a good tolerance so you can just hit the checkbox continue reducing within quality tolerance and then houdini will start converting the model to a lower res version of the high res one and let's wait for it to cook and as you can see now we're getting something that's a lot lower res it's a lot more friendly for unreal engine and we still preserve kind of most of our details like you know, the shoe is still in a good shape. And yeah, I think this is a quite good balance of being high quality enough and not having too many triangles. If you go a bit lower, you can use it as different LODs. But, you know, again, it's it's up to what you need for the job. And then we want to delete the old materials because we want to rebake them in the Maps Baker below. In our instance, it kind of worked, but in a lot of scans, you don't get perfectly nice tiles or you get multiple UDIMs and you know it's just a good practice to get rid of it here and then want to add normals again just for safety and basically now we need proper UVs for this shoe so if we hit space by five you see it's not too great the bit all over the place so if we go and lay down an auto UV note it actually does a really good job of creating automatic UVs and let's wait for it to cook for a second. And here you can see it's a lot better. We got bigger islands. It's a bit less all over the place. There's a few settings you can play with here. For me, these standard values work pretty well, uh, but there's a couple of different modes you can use. But in most occasions, I think the UV outer seam works really well. And the second thing you want to do after that is a UV layout. So if we go to UV view again, if we append the layout, it distributes the different 
objects a bit better. Like it stacks them together a bit nicer. It's not a massive difference, but it's just a good practice to do so. And now when we go back to the model and we activate the UV quick shade, we can see we get decent UVs for an automated process. Obviously, if you're doing retopology on this and you know, you're know you unwrapping your own textures, you can get something better. But I think for an automated workflow like this, it works pretty well. Let's disable it again. Add normals again. I don't know why I add normals too many times, but I just feel it's a, it's a good safety practice in Houdini. And then we add a null. So this is basically where our low poly version comes out. And then we can add into the maps baker. The maps baker basically does, as it says, you pipe in your low poly model in the first slot. The second slot is the high resolution model. And you could do a cage. I didn't need it in my case. And basically it will bake the maps from the high poly model to the low poly model. And you can select which ones you want and you can even generate some maps as well. And here you can set the resolution. I think 8K is maybe a bit excessive for this case. And the thing you need to play with is the max trace distance. You can visualize this by hitting visualize and you can see what Houdini is doing. It's basically offsetting the shape and then projecting the textures from the offset onto the new model. So if you see a lot of overlaps, you can get issues. So for example, around these laces, I might get some issues because it's going into the model. So therefore, you know, I can make it smaller. This might be a better idea, but if you go too small again, sometimes, you know, Houdini doesn't really catch kind of the model because sometimes it, it goes into the model. So this is something of trial and error, but basically if you have a batch of scans to do, you kind of want to test this out once. And then once you have something you're happy with, you can just batch through a whole thing. And then the last thing we need to append is a transform node because Unreal's unit system is a hundred times bigger than Houdini's one. So you want to compensate for that. Otherwise you have to do it on every single import and you kind of want to get it ready for Unreal. And the last thing is you need to export your FBX. So this is to do for one scan, but then if you want to automate the whole workflow, now you can do that in tops. So let's go over to tops. And yeah, I laid down a top net here. And with just a few simple nodes, you can create a batch process for the whole thing. So what you could do is you can point to a folder on disk. And I have two models. They're exactly the same, but I just duplicated them for <laughs> tutorial purposes. But you can basically select a file path that then works for all your models. So if you have model one, two, three, four, five, you can just delete the number and then add a star to it. So we'll grab everything, you know, ends with this and it will grab all the numbers afterwards. And you hit accept. And then if you click with shift G, you can see we have two objects. If we middle mouse click, we have model five and model six, you can see it in the file name. And you can see we get a couple of other items like a directory, an extension and a file name. And you can filter by range. So if you're doing lots of different ones, you know, you can filter them and you don't have to do the entire batch. You can do like two or three models, see how it works and then do the rest. But in this case, we only have two, so we don't need it. We want to create two attributes. We want to create the date just because I personally use it in file naming. And you could just set that to one value. So all the models you will export later will get the same date name. So you just don't have to do it manually just makes the process a bit easier. And then you can add an iteration. So if you're testing a lot, you know which batch the models were from and it's a bit easier to debug. And then the last thing you do is a rob fetch. So in this one, we grab our export mesh, our FBX exporter. And basically once we hit cook on this one, it will start rendering or cooking or exporting, however you want to call it, <laughs> this FBX export node. And therefore the whole tree above it will be used. So if we want to do it procedurally, we need to add that to our FBX import as well. And remember, we can see these values in our top net. So if we middle mouse button on an item, we can see the directory. So that's where I will grab from. Then we can see the file name. So we'll get the directory, then the file name, and then the extension, which means it can find the file on the disk because that's all it needs. And we can use the same values in our export value. So we can say dollar hip, create an export folder, then create a date name, a folder with the date, then create a folder with the iteration, and then give it the file name .fbx. And that's it. 
that is how you can create an automatic photogrammetry pipeline for Houdini. So this way you can export all your models to Unreal and you don't have to do everything manually. It's a huge time saver in big projects and hopefully it's helpful to you. Have fun creating all your scans. If you want to learn more about tops, then I would highly recommend the Antecma Patreon course. Chris did a lot of tutorials on tops. And again, if you want to check out a tutorial on photogrammetry, then School of Motion have a great one. Link in the description. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.